Hello everyone, this is Mr. 13 Things, and I'm preparing, or Silence Did Good, depending on who I put this uh, video out to on YouTube, I am preparing something for the We 40 Kids site, in, uh, and for a couple of uh, high schoolers I know that are working on a project uh, for interior design. And this is not an interior design specific project as much as it is a way to show some of the cool ways that SketchUp can deal with what you do with by hand. Um, First off, what's one of the great things about the movement of kids and their phones and their pictures and everything else that they miss, and it's, that's the fact that you can kind of still work with your hands on a sheet of paper, and we're going to use this example here as a, um, a proxy for a sheet of paper, and then get things into 3D. So what I've got here is something that's 900 by 600 pixels, and I'll kind of show you that. I'm using a program called SmoothDraw 3.2.6. There's a newer version, I think. I'm capturing on Camtasia but there's something called Camp Studio out there that's, or ScreenFlow, or all kinds of screen suckers, if you would. I'll show you that the canvas right now is 900 by 600. We're gonna see later that's gonna turn out to a specific size and sketch up if we wanna really think about this idea of scale. Students, very often you're gonna be drafting to scale um, in an in a architectural class, it might be quarter scale or it might be a scale, a quarter scale being about uh, not about a quarter scale is one quarter inch on paper equals a foot. So in other words, you get four feet per inch. In this case, we're just going to kind of draw a wall plate, if you would, and we're going to talk about then bringing it in or, or something that's going to be, I'm, I'm thinking inches here, um, something that's going to be in the order of 900. I'm going to do right now, I'm going to go over and right away bring this into add a new layer. And I'm going to write here with a particular ink. I'm going to let it know that it is going to be basically 900 pixels this way by 600 pixels this way. Now, if our scale is or our resolution is 150 dpi, then we know that this is going to be somewhere in the order of 4 inches. And this one would be not something in the order of, this one would be uh, six inches. And so you're pretty much looking at what you would say would be a, a typical picture, if you would, at 150 dots per inch. If in fact then we went up to twice the resolution, which was a pretty typical one for some printers, 300 dpi, we would um, have to have twice as much size in terms of pixelization here. I now, right now I worked on one layer I'm going to go ahead and add a new layer. I've got layer two here. And you're going to see later on there's lots of things you can do. We can change the name of the layer, the opacity. There's lots of things that are a little bit simpler to do than in Photoshop. But I would never dissuade a student from learning uh, Photoshop at the same time as the GIMP, which is the free open source program available to some of the students I know with free laptops provided by a local insurance provider. So I'm in layer two here and I'm just going to draw out the border and I'm going to apologize for the fact they have to move around the screen but this was because of the capture density I had to do this uh, tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to draft here and I'm going to maybe just do this a little bit colorish. I'm going to go here. I'm going to kind of draft along the border. Um, I'll go ahead and pull something a different color and I'm just going to draft out along here along the edge. And I'm going all the way along the edge and later on you're going to see that effect that you see here is in fact is pixelized. And we may see that in SketchUp when we bring this in. So I'm drafting on layer 2. I'll go all the way to the top here. I'm using also a Wacom tablet at about 70 bucks, a pretty good investment for someone um, who is anyone who's, gonna, who's got a computer and they can afford to drop some money. It used to be you put it into extra memory. I say you got to put it into a good touch sensitive device. So I've got that all on one layer. That's the green layer if we say that's there. And we're going to go ahead and add one more. Add a new layer. and We're now going to be undrafting on layer three. I'll go ahead and do some blue now. This is on a different layer. I see I could turn that off. I'll do that right now and go all the way through here and do some more of the same bit. So pretty fun program, smooth draw. Um, and it's akin to work, work with pens and pencils. So the point of this basically would be some of your hand skills are very similar. 
And so over time, we'll also be taking pictures of things that are four by six or various other dimensions and at a, at a given uh, resolution on cameras, on phones, or scanners, per se. The difference between a scanner and a phone these days, the big thing is a scanner, you can really take out uh, some of the variability of the um, of having to have your your view plane per or parallel to the image plane um, or the image as in the piece of paper. So, but there's software that'll do that as well. So now you see I've got two layers, one on top of the other, and red, blue, and green, blue. I'll do one more, add a layer here, and I'll just do scatterings here. So I'm gonna do scatterings of red. I'm going down here to the color that's orangish. Take it all the way out here. Close. Kids do this naturally. Me, I got to think about it. So I've got three layers now. I've got a red, a green, and a blue layer. RGB. All right, and some general effect going around. And we finally, of course, have that fourth layer here. Right, which was the original layer one. So turning things on and off. All right, that said, you would save this original when you do a file, save as, it saves in the original, you don't see us here, in an SSDOC file. That's really not what you're doing very often when you're doing something like this, though it is worthwhile to save the original file. What we're gonna do is we're gonna export each of the layers. So I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna go to here and export layer image. That's sending it down to pictures and I'm gonna type it up, whether or not you see it, I'm gonna call it lay one. And that's a PNG file. When I have my choices here, which will probably gonna get pulled out, a PNG file, I'm gonna save it. I'm gonna to go to layer two, export layer image, and I'm gonna call that lay2.png. PNG is the key here because PNC retains something called transparency or alpha. I'm gonna once again go export layer image and lay3. These are all gonna be, when you look at them and bring them back up, they're all gonna be the same resolution, the same size, which we said was 900 by 600, which means they should lay right on top of each other and get the same kind of effect, except with transparency that you would when you're looking here at the Smooth Draw. Smooth Draws are a great program. I'm not gonna show you all of it here. And um, one thing it doesn't do is draw a straight line or, or shapes, but you can do that. Uh, on your tablet with uh, just some basic drafting tools. It's a nice middle ground between the digital and the, and the more tactile, uh, which would be working with crayons and, or, or paper uh, colored pencils. So I'm in the last one, Xpare Layer Image. This is gonna be Lay 4. We really would like to be putting these into project files and the like, and we're gonna save it and through. Okay, so that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and minimize this, leave that screen still up, and now bring up SketchUp and just show you how that then could come in. Google SketchUp, I'm gonna bring up Google SketchUp 8. See the nice draft staring at you. Start using SketchUp and remember, every time you go into SketchUp out of habit, the first thing that you're doing any drafting engine, hopefully, especially if you're trying to get more towards the more exact world of the engineer, which we really don't necessarily want. Um, that comes a little bit later, but kind of getting things to the scale to start you right away want to go into window, model info, and make sure that you have your scale set. So I'm going to do mine to be decimal and inches. For SketchUp, that's kind of a consequence, of important consequence to a degree because of the fact that SketchUp, believe it or not, its base unit is the inch. Kind of weird, but it was developed by Architects at last software in 1999 in Boulder, Colorado. It's now owned by Trimble and it was owned by uh, Google for quite a while before that. So it's got some good bones, SketchUp does. It's also a pretty new interface. So now when I do something like this, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a box if I would right now, put it in here and then tell it I want it to be 900 comma 600. That would now make it 900 by 600 inches, wouldn't it? So I can do that. Instead of that, I could just say six by four. So I'm gonna go ahead and once again, draw a box here from there, and then six comma four without the inches because of what I had set. Try that again. I could still say six comma four, but maybe, and there I have that object there. Now, now we're to the point of thinking as well, just like with layers in the other bit, we might wanna go here and go to windows and keep track of layers 
kind of a good idea. I'm just going to go ahead and make a couple of layers here. What's current is layer four. I guess I'll start with that one. That's what's current. It's not the most important thing. Now when I do file, import, and I go out to pictures, hopefully I can find it. You, you know, that's why you keep things in project files. That's a really important thing that one should really get used to as early as one can. Um, keeping things gathered together in one working file. In this case, I let it go out to pictures. I'm going to go with layer four. And I'm going to use as an image. You don't see that. I hit open here. It's going to take me to bring it to here. And now when I bring that in, right, it had something to grab to. And so that image right there is if I now go to window layers and I turn off layer one, which is where I drafted the first thing, you see I got my nice transparent image. And I want to point out here as I looked at underneath it, it works both ways because it was brought in as an image. We'll keep that. Now we'll go to layer three. Okay, so you're starting to see how you can really start to take advantage. Think if you were doing these with, by hand, you would just have to do some Photoshop or Gimpy stuff to take out all the white to make it transparent. So we'll do this again. File, import. We're going now to layer three. Open. It's taking it. And if you remember, if we thought about the scale. That's the difference here. We knew it was 600 by. 900 by 600, we thought 150 dots per inch. So we get really want to get thinking of and letting our brains play around with the, that, that this math of this is not something that we should be afraid of. It's something we should embrace and anticipate and let the computer check our work. That's called the um, warm fuzzy, I think it's called in engineering speak. Okay, the next one. Again, I'm going to go to layer two now. The current layer was what's clicked there. Then file, import. We're going to go to layer two, open. You notice me grabbing. I gave myself something to grab. It didn't like it, so I'm going to go edit, undo. So again, file, import, layer two, as an image, open. Grab the first one there. Grab the second one there. I now have the layer two. Uh, layer one, then, I think, was the one that had the pixelization or the calcs that we had in there. So file, import, layer one, open, grab the first. Again, it didn't take, so I'm going to go edit undo. So file, import, running out of time here, uses image, open. That wasn't the right one. If you notice there, that scale wasn't right either. So edit, undo file, import, layer one, as image, open. So it's not necessarily as developed as you might be used to because this is still um, developed in 1999. But right away here, you can start to see that as I go ahead and turn on, you know, go to layer one, let's say, turn that off. This idea of being able to kind of play around with some of that underlying stuff right away is kind of neat, especially if you then start combining it. What I'm going to do here, I'm going to turn everything on. And this understanding working with layers is kind of a big deal. In SketchUp, you almost got to have some box out here that you're going to see. This is a natural 3D drafter. Very quickly, you draft that box. And I take it and stick it all together. Right click. I make it a group or a component. I'll start with a group here. That gives me the ability to do this. And I'll show you now here in a second. The way to manipulate a lot of software is you grab first what you want to work on. And whether you go right to left, grab what you want to work on, grab the tool. And then in this case, you're going to grab, I'm hitting an escape key. I'm grabbing that and holding the shift key. So that's some playing around. Now all of a sudden you're working in 3D. I'm going to take and move that box out to the side here. I'm just kind of moving around and move it up. You don't see that there. There it is. And if you think about it, um, you almost got this sense of being able to think about getting um, some kind of weird kind of stage effects by turning things on and off. So I can't hide the current layer. So the kind of idea of being able to run through turning different bits on. So have some nice border stuff changing at the same time. You've got what's going on in terms of moving things in the background. I'll finally lay this out. Remember, you start thinking about what your eye sees, whatever else. This is also a 
pretty incredible program in that you can set the camera. I'm holding it down as I go to the middle. Now I can really get the effect of what something looks like as I start playing with some of this bit. So that's a quick run through on how you can think about how things work between at least pixelized or um, pixels and the, the, the design plane. Uh, you can work it up to all kinds of scaling stuff. Also, but something that re why you want to really be good at your design and your drafting, uh, drafting a scale that you can bring a lot of that stuff in pretty quickly uh, without ever doing any CAD per se and getting a 3D structure of many colors and um, uh, working for you. So that's a quick, i talking fast, uh, but uh, just trying to get this uh, compact for uh, kids who don't necessarily like to hear their father speak. Thanks for listening.